communist China. China was deeply respectful of its tradition and history. Moreover, it was isolated from the economic and technological changes of the Industrial Revolution underway in the West. Most Chinese still worked as poor farmers. Foreigners took advantage of China's weakness. Britain had seized Hong Kong and Japan had taken the island of Taiwan. China was forced to sign humiliating treaties that set up zones within China that were under foreign rule. The Qing or Manchu dynasty had conquered China in 1644, but later Qing rulers were weak. Many Chinese people hoped for an end to the Qing rule. They wanted China to have a democratic government and one that was less influenced by foreign nations. Empress Tzu Shi was the last strong ruler of imperial China. The strongest voice for a more democratic and independent China was that of Sun Yat-sen. Sun wanted a Chinese republic in which foreign nations had no control over China's government. Sun also wanted China to improve its agriculture and industry. Many Chinese agreed with Sun when he said, The real trouble is that China is not an independent country. She is the victim of foreign countries. I set myself the object of the overthrow of the Qing dynasty and the establishment of a Chinese republic in its roots. In 1911, the Chinese monarchy was overthrown and Sun Yat-sen's Nationalist Party formed a new government for China called the Republic of China. However, the Republic of China had problems ruling the country. Local military leaders called warlords had seized power in many areas during the struggle to overthrow the Qing dynasty. Nationalist forces with the help of Chinese and Soviet communists finally defeated the warlords in 1927. Sun Yat-sen had died in 1925. A power struggle immediately broke out until Chiang Kai-shek, a nationalist general and the brother-in-law of Sun Yat-sen, took power. Chiang feared the power of the Chinese communists and he attacked them in 1927 at Shanghai and Nanjing. A new civil war soon erupted. In 1934, Chiang's army surrounded the communists in southern China and cut off food and supplies. He hoped to break their power. Mao Zedong, the communist leader, escaped with 80,000 of his followers. They began a long retreat to the north. This journey is called the Long March. Men and women walked almost 6,000 miles in about a year a distance almost equal to walking across the United States twice. The marchers had to cross steep mountains in freezing winds. They were poorly clothed and often hungry. The survivors faced more hardships in the rainy marshes of northern China. Finding food and clean water was difficult and quicksand could swallow the careless. Only about 10% of those who began the long march lived to reach northern China. The survivors gathered at the great bend of the Huang He. Here, at Yan'an, they recovered from their journey and began to spread the ideas of communism among the peasants and farmers in the surrounding area. In 1937, Japanese forces launched a brutal conquest of China. The Japanese are very strong-willed and would not give up. Communists and nationalists agreed to cooperate to fight the Japanese invaders. Eight years of terrible suffering followed before Japan surrendered at the end of World War II. Qing and Mao friends.
almost immediately after the communists and the nationalist government renewed their civil war. The nationalists were at a disadvantage. Nationalist troops had done most of the fighting against the Japanese. In addition, inflation was out of control, and the people held the nationalist government responsible. Chang also had to fight warlords who had seized power during the war. Meanwhile, the communists had become very popular in rural areas. They had shown farmers how to produce more crops while they worked. They also talked with them about communism. After two years of fighting, the communists drove the nationalists out of China. Chang and his followers retreated to the island of Taiwan. Here in Taiwan, the people continued the Republic of China in exile. In 1949, Mao proclaimed the People's Republic of China a communist state. Mao Zedong was the new ruler of China. The warlords and nationalist leaders were gone. Many Chinese hoped that the communism would provide jobs and good government. The communists provided housing, medical care, and food supplies for the city workers. They supported education for all Chinese as well as equal rights for women. At the same time, they changed China in the same ways communists had changed Russia. Private ownership was ended, and collective farms were formed. They tried to create a modern industry state from the agricultural society of traditional China. There was also great suffering. Many people died or disappeared during the first years of communist rule. As many as one million people were killed during the changeover. In 1957, Mao proclaimed the Great Leap Forward. Factories worked day and night to help China industrialize. Families even set up tiny steel-making furnaces in their backyards. Farmers and their families were forced onto large communes or collective farms. The government decided which crops each commune would produce. Moreover, people in communes were forced to work on bridges, dams, and other government projects. Commune life was a complete change from Chinese traditional life. People worked in teams, and families were not allowed to live together. People were told to put loyalty to the government ahead of loyalty to the family. The Great Leap Forward was a disaster. Communes produced less grain than the old family farms. Few Chinese workers knew how to make steel. So much of the steel they made was unusable. In 1966, Mao began a 10-year period called the Cultural Revolution. He set out to destroy all non-communist beliefs. Leaders who opposed him were punished. Mao also encouraged bands of students to break into people's homes to destroy Chinese classics and art. Anyone wearing Western-made clothing or owning Western writings faced attack. Anyone could be accused of working against Mao and forced to confess publicly. Mao used posters and books to spread communist ideas among his followers. China's new society had become a nightmare of fear, chaos, and poverty. The Cultural Revolution ended with the death of Mao Zedong in 1976. Some of China's new leaders, who had been punished during the Cultural Revolution, returned to power and set off on a new path for their country. In summary, China changed drastically in the last 100 years. The overthrow of the Qing dynasty led to two rival armies, the nationalists and the communists, fighting to control the country. Eventually, the communist army won control of China. The communist party modernized China, but also caused great suffering with the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution.